Hey everyone, my name is Fluxtrance, and I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to bring you a tutorial on how to use the Cinematic Camera Extended mod in City Skylines. Cinematic Camera Extended is pretty much the best camera mod for creating cinematics. Whether you're looking to capture smooth footage in an otherwise laggy city, or you're just interested in creating some artsy cinematics, this mod will give you all the tools you need to make that happen. To get started, subscribe to the Cinematic Camera Extended mod on the Steam Workshop and be sure to enable it in the Content Manager. Once in-game, you can open the mod's UI with the clapboard icon on the bottom right or just by pressing the C key. Once you have the panel open, the next step is to add some points to our camera path. You can do this by clicking the plus button on the top left of the panel or by pressing the plus key on your keyboard's numpad. You can also remove any point by clicking its respective X button, or alternatively, remove the most recently added point by pressing the minus key on your numpad. You'll notice that the points you're adding are based on the game's current camera position and field of view. FOV adjustment is really one of the best ways that you can up the quality of your cinematics. Really low FOVs in the 20 to 40 range can make your shots look like they come from a telephoto lens, while higher FOVs in the 120 to 160 range can yield that nice wide angle fisheye look. I've also found 50 FOV for overhead shots to be quite reminiscent of the older isometric city sim games. Now many people, myself included, would much rather set up their cinematics with the game's UI disabled. Fortunately, as long as you have the mod open before disabling the game's UI, you can just use the hotkeys to add and remove points. Now that you've got your points set up, you'll notice that each point has some transition options associated with it. The first button is pretty simple. Clicking the point button will reveal the camera angle you've captured for that point. The next option is a little bit less intuitive. The camera movement easing dropdown lets you tweak the behavior of the camera as it moves between points. As a general rule of thumb, the option selected in this dropdown will always affect the transition between this current point and the next point. So if I wanted to add some smoothing between points 0 and point 1, I would change the setting in point 0. The in setting will cause the camera to start with a velocity of 0 and then slowly accelerate into the transition. Likewise, the out setting will slow the camera to a stop as it approaches the next point. In out just applies both. The auto setting will try to create the smoothest transition between these two points automatically, and as you probably guessed, the none setting applies no smoothing and maintains constant velocity between this point and the next. Next up, we've got three different values to play with. The first is the transition duration in seconds between the current point and the next point. The second is the delay value, also in seconds. This specifies how long the camera should freeze on this point before transitioning to the next point. Finally, we have the field of view value. This is automatically set when adding a new point based on the current FOV, but it can also be changed manually. It's worth noting that if you're feeling like Alfred Hitchcock, you can absolutely change the FOV between points to achieve that famous vertigo effect. Finally, if you'd like to replace a point in your sequence, just press the circle button to recapture it. With the settings in place, it's time to take a look at the final result. If you'd like to preview your cinematic, just move the uppermost slider back and forth to scrub through your sequence. When you're satisfied, press the arrow button on the top right of the panel, or enter on your numpad to start playback. Once the sequence completes, it'll close automatically. If you'd like to manually exit, just press the C key. If your sequence felt too fast or too slow, you can adjust the playback speed with the dropdown just to the right of the preview slider. Let's take a look now at some of the playback settings. While the hide UI during playback and unpaused simulation toggles might be pretty self-explanatory, the FPS setting isn't quite as intuitive. Toggling this feature will force the game to slow its simulation speed to match the target FPS value. It's worth noting that 60 FPS is considered real-time in this context. So for example, if we set our FPS value to 15 and toggle the setting, the game will slow its simulation speed to one-fourth the original speed and try to display 15 frames per second. This is incredibly useful for content creators who want to achieve smooth 60fps shots in cities that can only be run at a low frame rate. To give a better example, let's say that you know given your current hardware that you can only get roughly 10 frames per second in your city. You'd then want to toggle the FPS option and force 10 FPS. The game will now simulate at 1 6th the original speed, and then once you have your footage, all you need to do is speed it back up to 6 times speed for a nice smooth 60 FPS shot in real time. With all that said, we've covered pretty much everything you need to know about the Cinematic Camera Extended mod, but this is really only the baseline. Now that you know all the tools and all the options, try combining this mod with other mods like the Enhanced Zoom Continued or Ultimate Level of Detail mods to achieve cool depth of field effects or prevent LODs from loading during your cinematics. Really the possibilities are endless. 
But aside from that, I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe here for more tutorials like this one.